Hey you guys, welcome back to um, week two of our June series, guys. This topic for this week is righteousness, guys. And please excuse the background noise, guys. I apologize with the AC. I do have it kind of low, but you know, with the white noise in the back, you can hear it sounds more louder than what it actually is. This is like my only time to really record. So please, you know, excuse that. But as we talked about last week, we kind of went over like what you guys can look forward to this month. And for this week, week two, we're talking about righteousness. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So according to Google, the definition of righteousness is the quality of being, and hopefully I can hear my how these headphones are, the quality of being morally right or justifiable. And also like it references goodness, virtue, uprightness, integrity, decency, worthiness, innocence, all of that. And, you know, we do have some videos talking about righteousness, but I want you guys to think about this this week and not only just this week while we're doing Bible study and stuff, but, you know, throughout your your Christian walking journey, you know, even reflecting back or like moving forward, how really Christ is our righteousness. You know, God doesn't want us to have a righteousness of our own. That is not real righteousness. You know, like true righteousness and real righteousness is only found in and of Jesus Christ. Like, you know, repenting and believing in him, believing on him and all those things. So, you know, because like when, when people get into self-righteousness, that's what the devil want. Like the devil want people to be self-righteous. Like he want them to have that Sadducee Pharisee type um mindset and everything he wants you to be self-righteous because like basically when a person is self-righteous it takes the focus off christ you know who is true and real and like the only real righteousness and basically if you think about it this is the way god showed it to me when i was taking notes for this this video is pre-recorded but when i was taking notes for this this is what he showed me you know basically it takes the focus off of christ and it puts it on the person. And if you think about it, when the person is self-righteous, it's like, oh, they have this mentality like, oh, I don't need Christ. They feel like they are superior, you know, and it, it basically that opens up the door to pride in a major deception. And if you think about that, this opens the door for all sorts of evil, because look at what happened with the devil. He felt like so full of himself. Like you see a person that's so full of themselves, you know, and you see what happened when they have no humility, you know, and everything is just about them and they're so puffed up and selfish. You see what happens with them, you know, unless they repent and really allow God to humble them. But like when the person is self-righteous and I don't want anyone to misunderstand me, like, you know, God wants us to like live out our best in him. He wants us to be led by the Holy Spirit. There's going to be times where, you know, we miss the mark and we fall and stuff like that. But we should never feel like it's my righteousness. I'm better than you because of this. I'm better than you because of that. You shouldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? You should not. We have talked about that multiple times over the years. But you, you shouldn't do that. It should not be, oh, well, God is blessing me because of me only god is doing this for me or i'm blessed with these things or i'm blessed with these gifts or these things because of my works because of my actions because of me you know i could see of you saying well god is rewarding and honoring me because i'm doing my best to be faithful i'm doing my i feel like i'm talking to someone like right now with this i'm doing my best to be faithful i'm doing i know i'm talking to you guys but i feel like this is specifically for somebody i'm doing my best to like i'm not saying okay so like of you saying like well, God is honor rewarding and blessing me because I'm doing my best to be faithful. I'm doing my best to live right. I'm doing my best to seek him. I'm doing my best to honor him in his strength and his power. And you literally acknowledging God. I'm not talking about that because God is honoring that. And God will honor those that diligently seek him. But I'm talking about a person that is no humility. Everything is about them. It's, it's like they it's like they Jesus Christ. And that's like a big no, no, you know, so God is not with that. So righteousness, true righteousness is found in and of Jesus Christ. You know, you don't want to become self-righteous like a Pharisee or Sadducee. Many of them, you know, they saw the Lord. Some of them didn't. But for the ones that saw the Lord right before him, and we have so many videos talking about Pharisees and Sadducees and what the Bible says and different things. You know, all of them were not like that. Like you see Nicodemus, he went 
to the Lord, you know, kind of like secretly or whatever. And we talked about him as well. But there were some that was just so self-righteous, you know, even the Lord was before them. And it's like it just totally went over their head. You know, because you being self-righteous, again, it takes it takes it off of you. I'm, I'm sorry. It takes it off of the Lord and it put the focus on you. Look at me. Look at this. Look at that. And God is like, no. You know, and he rebuked them so many times and he would give parables and things about them. And it would upset them because it's, he was telling the truth. And like he would say different examples is not before me. We have, I got some scriptures that I wrote, but the other ones that I'm going to tell you, all is not before me. The Holy Spirit is bringing back to my remembrance. Like he would like be like, you know, don't desire um, this seed or that or don't be like the Pharisees or Sadducees where they give people all these rules and different things like on the outside they look like this but on the inside they're filled with dead man's bones and he would just give the people so many different examples with like how not to be you know like when like for one example when you when you're fasting don't be like those those people that is you know oh I'm fasting you know and you you cry now oh I'm fasting that's your reward but the bible says when you're fasting you are to wash your face you know like you you shouldn't have the appearance like so somber like oh i'm fasting so you can get the glory from men like oh you're so super religious like you fasting and like you just like blowing your own horn god is like just paraphrasing he like there's no reward that that is your reward from that's your reward right there which is really no reward because you want the approval of a man but when you're fasting you're supposed to do it to your father in heaven you're supposed to do it in secret and your father that sees what you do in secret which is prayer fasting different things will reward you openly you know, I can see like if it's a corporate fast or maybe you're fasting with your wife or maybe you're fasting with your husband or your family or something like that. That's different. But for a person that's just broadcasting, broadcasting, broadcasting this and that to put the work like to put the spotlight on them. That's pointing back to self-righteousness. And originally when God had gave me these because he gave me these a while ago, when he had gave me this, I was taking notes with it, you know, and I was just thinking, OK, righteousness of Christ. But then, like, the more notes he starts sharing, I'm like, Lord, you really want me to share these with people, like, again, you know, so it's for somebody. So I want to make this point again. We're going to get into reading after a few more nuggets because I'm not going to hold y'all long. God doesn't want us to have a righteousness of our own, like a, like a self-righteousness. And of course, you guys know I'm going to give you scriptures on this. He doesn't want us to have a righteousness of our own. He don't want us to feel like our righteousness is superior above Jesus Christ. That's dangerous. That's that that's not even uh, considered righteousness. That's like self-seeking. That's and and then it's you're deceived also. So God doesn't want us to have. A, I have to reiterate this. He doesn't want us to have righteousness of our own. Like to us to feel like I am the glory. I am God. I am greater than Jesus Christ because of this. Because of that. And sadly, as it was in the Bible's days, it's in these days too. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, it's nothing new under the sun. People, there's people that feel like that. There's people that's like, I know I'm nothing without the Lord. Like um, the, the story that we read multiple times with, there was two people that went before the Lord. It was a parable the Lord had gave them. And one man was a sinner. He wouldn't even look up to heaven. He was like, God have mercy on me. And then another man was, um, he was so prideful. He was so self-righteous. And he was like, oh God, I thank you that I'm not like buddy over there. He didn't say buddy over there. He was like, I thank you God that I'm not like um, that man over there. You know, I I pay this every this. I fast this and that. If, if I'm not mistaken, he was just bragging on everything he do. But Jesus said, that man who was doing what seemingly, quote unquote, was all them good works, but was self-righteous, he did not. He was, he did not. He didn't go home justified. He wasn't before God justified. The man who was humble, that was the sinner, that was humble, basically, and just paraphrasing, was not bragging on himself. He was the one who was justified before the Lord. Just like the Lord had told um, back in Samuel, when we did our David series, when he told him to go anoint um, the next king, when he told him, and you know, Samuel's like, well, surely this is brothers, to, um, David's brothers, he was like, who's looking at their appearance, and they hide and how they look out on the outside and everything, and you know, he kept saying, well, surely this is the Lord's anointing, and the Lord was telling him, he was like, Samuel, that's not him, he was like, I rejected him, that's not him, he was like, man looks at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart, you know, 
and God looks at our heart. We have to talk about this. He looks at our motives. You know, it's not. It's, it's good about the good works and the good things you're doing for the Lord. But when you're doing with what wrong motives, and this attention is about you, and it's not pointing people back to the Lord, something is seriously wrong with that. You know, so you know, think about that. Think about it. When it comes to righteousness, do you seek to have self like you seek to have a self righteousness so you can get the glory or people can say, Look at this and look at that and there's nothing wrong with people applauding like, Wow, like we know how you used to be, we see God moving in your life, glory to God, or wow, you've really changed or you've really grown. I'm not talking about like goals or accomplishments or good things or compliments. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where you take all that and you just you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like a major difference. So think about that, guys. Excuse me. Think about that. Like, are you a person where, you know, you have a righteousness of your own? Or is it like, I know I'm nothing without the Lord. The righteousness that I have is because of him. I'm daily being consecrated. I'm daily being pruned. I'm daily learning. I'm daily gleaning. I'm daily learning. I'm daily becoming more and more like Christ. It's not because of me. It's not because of my words. It's not. Or are you that person that's like, oh, it is me. It's this, it's that. And it all points back to you. But where's the Lord? Because if the Lord is not in the center of it, and the Bible says, except the Lord builds the house, those that labor, labors in vain. So, if he not building your house, it's like, if you think about it, if the Lord is not building somebody's house, he's not with it, you know, he's not blessing, he's not in the midst. That person, if you think about it, is on like sinking sand. We read this before in the New Testament. Talking about being built on solid rock or sinking sand. That person is on sinking sand because their foundation is not Jesus Christ. Because if you just think about this, this is the way God showed this to me when I was writing the notes. Keep in mind. Going back to the devil wants you to be self-righteous because that takes the focus off Christ, who is true and only righteousness, and put the focus on you. If the focus on you, you feel like you puffed up, that's pride, that's major deception, this opens the door to all sorts of evil. But remember, Christ died for you. You did not die for Christ. Like, you could not even die for yourself. So how do you feel like, and even he said in, um... I think it was in John. We had read this before. It's not before me. But he was like, the student is not greater than the teacher. He was like, if the world hate him, it will hate the disciples also. It will hate and we his disciples too, you know. So it will, you know, so basically, like, if it hated him, it will hate us too. That's why, it, like the Bible talk about, you know, if you are a friend of the world, you are enmity with the Lord. Like if you are a friend, if you are a friend of of the world, you are not a friend of God. You know, so you know you couldn't die for yourself because if you could have, you would have. You definitely couldn't like die, like go through death, burial, and resurrection for yourself. So you know, and you know something that just came to me. You know, like the balloons. Like let's say you have an event or something, and the balloons. Like sometimes they have to fill up the balloons, and sometimes the the balloons are already filled but think about those big 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 pretty big balloons that like take up maybe like a whole centerpiece like that type and like you just push it with a pin and all the air blows out that's kind of how it is with a person that's self-righteous the more puffed up they are the more air is going to come out the more stuff is going to come out until they just deflate and come to nothing and be humble you know because the same balloon that can rise and go up like if it's like you know you got to keep them tied down because like if you put them in a car or somewhere or whatever because they could be easy to let go or you got to have them hooked to something where it can like center them and ground them because if you don't you know it could just go up and it'll go all the way up but then think about when they deflate they can't go up and it's like that's like um king nebuchadnezzar and i don't mean to go all over the place some of these things here on the notes and a lot of this even as i'm just recording it's just being downloaded to me so thank you holy spirit but even with king nebuchadnezzar king nebuchadnezzar like we talked about it when we did our daniel series he was so prideful and puffed up even though god was using him and then a lot of things were just he just felt it was him and god had gave him time you know to like humble himself and he didn't humble himself so god had to humble him and he had the mind of an animal his claws grew he like everything like until he really was humble just like that vision God had showed Daniel 
um, you know, because he was like, what do this, like, what does this mean, what do this mean, you know, and Daniel was like, he first kind of didn't want to tell him, but then he told him, and he was like, you, you have to be humble, like, God is trying to humble you, like, he's seen the stump, which means it wasn't completely pulled from the root, which means the kingdom was going to be restored to him, but the stump was cut down, all that greatness and vastness that he saw, it's like, God cut that down. I'm talking about when brother was on his balcony, his palace, or whatever, and that angel came, the spirit of the Lord came, and immediately, because I think he had a year, and he didn't take heed. So think about this, guys, this week, and moving forward. Do you have a righteousness of your own, or is your righteousness found in the Lord? Okay, so... um. What was another one I wanted to give you guys? Okay, so we don't become righteous through our own works and efforts, but by allowing God to have his way in our lives, yielding to the Holy Spirit, and really allowing and making Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And it has to be Lord and Savior. Because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Jesus is my Savior, but he's not your Lord. You know, and it has to be both. You know, so think about that. And now I believe we're going to get into the scripture readings. Also, two things the Lord told me. I'm glad I wrote this because I would have forgot. Two things the Lord told me to tell you guys. He said, God said, I want my people to be free and stay in the word. So God wants you to be free and he wants you to stay in the word. Different people are dealing with different things. But when it comes to freedom and liberty in Christ, he wants you to be free. And he wants you to stay in his word. And that's our theme for this month. You know deeper in the word of god you know and as you guys that are used to the channel see we are big on the word of god that's primarily what this channel is based upon the foundation is of that you know the word of god originally i thought it was going to be for my business my boutique stuff but the lord was like uh no he just he, he had to get me kind of i'm not gonna say reeled in but i kind of that's the best word that comes to my mind now but he had to reel me in because he know if he would have told me you're going to start a, a um this type of ministry channel and do bible studies and all that he knew i would have ran i would have ran further away than jonah but thank god you know i thank god i i thank god for just choosing and using me and i'm just thankful for what he's doing not just here but in the lives of other people that he used to you know reach and touch and bless you and and likewise but that's a word he said he wants his people to be free and stay in the word you know and another thing he said was tell my people i love them you know so let's get into this um this reading you guys and i'm not going to be on too too long so if, for you that are taking um notes i may leave it below if i remember in the description box for you that are taking notes for the scriptures, we're going to be coming from John chapter 6. We're going to read that. Psalms 106 verse 3, 1 John 3, 7, 1 John 2, 29, Isaiah 33 verses 15 through 17, and 1 Peter 3, 14. And I do encourage you guys to read them in full context, or you can just check out, you know, when we've, um, when we've read them before. Another one, guys, let me read this one first. Isaiah 5 verse 21 says, Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. And if you look at this chapter, we did read Isaiah, but it's talking about the song of the vineyard and woes and judgment. But Isaiah 5 21, Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Okay, let me read the small ones, not the small ones, but like the shorter scriptures first and then John 6 because John 6 is very lengthy. So Psalms 106 verse 3. It's the next one, guys. Y'all can flip with me in your Bibles or you could just listen. Psalms 106 verse 3 says, Blessed are those who maintain justice, who constantly do what is right. Amen, you guys. And 1 John 3, 7. I'm going to read those now. Let me flip back there. 1 John 3, verse 7 says, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. Because actually what I want to read, let me tell you guys what I want to read. I really wish I could read 1 John 2 and 3, all of it, but we won't have time to read it. And we do have a John series and all of the uh, first, second, and third John series. But I want to read, let me read First John 3, verses 1 through 7. No, bear with me, guys. 
Y'all know a little about the first John 3 verses 1 through 10. Let's read that. Okay. And before we read that, let me read first John 2, 28 to 29. Because first John 2 is talking about um continuing on. It's talking about like, you know, walking in the light. Um do not love the world, warn against Antichrist and children of God. I want to read the children of God and now their children continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Now let's read. That was first John two twenty eight to 29. Now let's read first John three, one through 10. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when he appears, or when it is made known, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law, in fact, sin is lawlessness. And we didn't see video talking about the law, grace, all that, so I'm just continue reading. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. And think about that. We sin every day, and that's is sin. I know when we led by the Spirit, we're not, you know, ruled by sin, but because we're still in this this fallen world and this carnal, fleshly nature too, we sin. That's why we have to repent. So think about it. This, that, thank you, Lord. Look how that ties back to what we're talking about, to righteousness. Because, see, these scriptures I didn't have written down. It's like the Lord just, um, I had the first John 3, 7, but if I keep opening my eyes back to the chapter 2 and going a little bit more with the um, chapter 3. So thank you, Lord. So think about that. You know, okay, so, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or, or known him. Dear children, and I'm reminded of Romans where I talk about, so if you live by the spirit, you got to keep in step with the spirit. Amen, Lord. So dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. That's where we get that verse 7 from, but we get to read a little bit more context. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning, because like you're going to feel that conviction, right? He cannot go on sinning, because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. You know, because the Bible talk about, like, how can you say you love God who you cannot see, but you hate your brother who you cannot see? Like, oh no, how can you say you love God who you cannot see, but you hate your brother who you can't see? That's not, that's not, um, that's not so, you know, just paraphrasing. Okay, so what's the next one, guys? Okay, so First John, okay, I read that to you guys. Okay, Isaiah 33, let me read that. And if I forget to um, put some of these in the description box, guys, um, you guys can always just reference this video. You know, um, write it. Okay, Isaiah 33, 15 through 17. Isaiah 33 is talking about distress and help and stuff, but 15 through 17 says, He who walks righteously, thank you, Jesus, he who walks righteously and speaks what is right, who rejects gain from extortion and keeps his hand from accepting bribes, who stops his ears against plots of murder and shuts his eyes against contemplating evil. This is the man who will dwell on the heights, whose refuge will be on the mountain, will be the mountain fortress. His bread will be supplied and water will not fail him. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty and view a land that stretches afar. Amen. And 1 Peter 3.14, before we get into John 6. 1 Peter, let me, okay, let me back. Hold on, guys. And guys, if this video should happen to cut off, um, you guys, please just check out when we did them on playlists or just keep reading. But I'm hoping to um, that it does not cut off. But let me find Peter. Okay, hold on, guys. Give me a second, please. 
1 Peter 3, 14. Okay, 1 Peter 3, we did a Peter series, but it's talking about wives and husbands and suffering for doing good. And verse 14 says, okay, so just a quick backdrop. Verses 8 through 22 is talking about suffering for doing good, but I want to look at just 14 for the sake of time because we have to still read John 6. Okay, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear or do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. Isaiah 8, 12. And it, you can read that one in a little bit more context and stuff because it, it gives a lot of more nuggets about suffering for doing good. And also chapter 4 talk about like living for God and suffering for being a Christian you know and that wasn't in the notes but just in case if you wanted to read it so john chapter six we're going to close with john six we do have a john series but the lord had put this on my heart jesus feeds the five thousand we're talking about jesus walks on the water jesus the bread of life many disciples desert jesus you know and a lot of people they feel like well lord you know this person did this or that or this is, you know, and God is like, well, it happened to me. You know, God created people for his um, His glory. We talked about this multiple times. And so how many people don't honor God with their gifts or don't honor God with their life or they know his goodness and they just turn on him and be blinded by this world and the devil of this world? And you don't think that hurt God? You know, it's not his will for no man to perish. He want everybody to come to repentance. But everybody don't want to come to repentance, guys. Some people are giving over to a reprobate mind. And it's like, just like he told us in John, he told them what it was. You know, he told them. He said, if they hate me, they're going to hate you. So it's like, we should not be surprised when you suffer for being a Christian because Christ suffered. Like, I know some. this is a word for somebody. Like, I know sometimes it's hurtful or you don't understand, but it's like, being a Christian means you're going to be Christ-like. The Bible talks about if you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. So if you persecute it and you go through for his glory, you're going to be rewarded in this earth, in this life, and also in the life to come in heaven. So I just hope this would encourage you. Okay, so John 6, is, this is what we're talking about. Sometime after this, because if you go back, you can see in 5 why I said Okay, but sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, excuse me, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, eight months wages, like in the Greek, 200 denarii, would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with, two, with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, half the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the man sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. And the Lord is saying to me, of this thing do cut off, I just have to keep on reading. So, okay, guys. So, Jesus said, how the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. Come on, guys. That is overflow. That is abundance. That is glory be to God. Amen, you guys. So he did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Okay, so now Jesus walks on the water. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. 
a strong wind was blowing and the waters were rough. When they had rolled three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I. Don't be afraid. The Lord is speaking to somebody with, with these verses. Thank you, Jesus. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus.